Today's video, guys, we have an OG matchup. We have Faker versus Rookie. Faker throwing it back with some Katarina gameplay. Super spicy mechanical champion. It's a really fun game to watch, and I hope you enjoy it. Jumping onto the rift now, guys, the matchup. Katarina versus Lucian. Um, Faker gone for the Ignite. Lucian gone for the Exhaust. So you have to look at this when you get into the game, guys. Make sure to know what the enemy summoner spell what summoner spells the enemy has. A lot of people don't really look at this until it's too late. They go, oh, this guy's got TP. Oh, this guy's got Cleanse or Ignite. Try and situate yourself before the game. As, as you're in the loading screen or in the early game, just have a look at these things because it's super important. Um, and even the starting items, you can see Faker has Cloth, Armor, 4 Potions. This is definitely not normal. You can see he's going to be going for an early Seeker's Arm Guard Rush. Um, and he's going to be trying to sit back, relax, sustain any type of harass the Lucian puts out. Because obviously Lucian is the strongest laner in the game. You do not want to get poked out and zoned by a Lucian. And Rookie is known for his aggressive early lane. So let's see how Faker can really stack up against this, this Lucian pick. As you can see, just going to give some early CS. Please, guys. Too many of you guys lose your lanes level 1 for no reason. Just give a little bit of CS. Make sure you get the XP. But just give a little bit of CS. Good juke out onto that Q. And if you're playing the Lucian mid... Make sure you're walking up to try and zone from CS and XP as well if you have the range advantage. And you can see Faker flashes forward there. They're going to pick up the first blood. Beautiful gank by the Lee Sin. And there you go. You can see Faker's early patience pays off. Lee Sin gets a level 2 gank off. And I want to see how Rookie can try and recover this lane or Faker can snowball it. He needs to shove it in. But it looks like he's just going to let the lane sit, I guess. I was thinking maybe he wanted to look for a base, but it looks like he's just going to stay in lane. Because he doesn't, he wouldn't have enough for the Seeker's Arm Guard, so he just stays a little bit. Okay, I like this. There's no way that Rookie should be able to, he should be able to walk in and really pressure Faker off the wave now, though. Gonna slowly crash into Faker, it shouldn't be too bad. Beautiful dodges out on those Lucian Qs. Of course, if you're fast enough, you can dodge the Lucian Qs, guys. Make sure to try and sidestep it. This wave's going to crash. Fake is actually at no risk. As he moves in to try and get some XP there. And that's a little bit of a hefty trade that wasn't necessary. Bit of ego there. You just need to chill. Got to come into tower now. It's not really diveable, but... If Faker missteps, for sure he could die. You can see Rookie just sitting there. And you want to buff, like, be buffering your autos, by the way. So, like, you want to be... Whenever I do this, like, I'm always... I move, and then I click on the Katarina. Then I move and click on the Katarina. So that when she eventually comes into my range, I get the instant auto off. I get the auto, I move back out. Rather than her going in, then pressing the auto, I'm trying to space that in beforehand and buffer it. That's fake. You're trying to force a base now. It's on the cannon wave as well. But Rookie... Doesn't cancel it, but Faker just ends up staying. And this is a little bit of an overstay, in my opinion. I think that Faker definitely... The wave has been a little bit awkward to him. Not really sure what I could have done to... Kind of, you could really do to save it. Maybe you should have forced the base after the kill. Then you would have come back to the freeze. Probably the better option, but... Thank God he went four health potions. That is a ridiculous amount of sustain. And look, he's still got another potion. He's hard chilling. Coming into level 5 now. And it looks like we will just sack a wave and take a bad base. Ooh, rookie. I'm telling you guys, it's all about those back timings, those back cancels in high elo. This so you, It's so hard to get a good base off. And rookie just making sure Faker has to stay here. Oh. Down 11 CS. Rookie's doing a really good job to zone her Faker off. He's going to get a Seeker's Arm Guard here. Come back to lane and he'll be fine. Stack that bad boy up. He's going to sack an entire wave though. Well, once again, doesn't complete his base. Just going to wait for the wave to shove in. And Rookie doesn't want to let Faker like just get a free base. Like You don't want a base for base if you've got the lead in the lane. So Rookie just making sure... He's staying to shove these waves in so that eventually when Faker does take the base, he's going to have to miss a wave. And you can see, he's just going to keep on staying. Sack the CS and stay. It's a really good game to learn what to do, guys, when you can't get a good base off. Like, literally so many players 
will move up and die here to the Lucian for no reason. Because you're permanently shoving, ping to your jungler, hey man, I need help. Come and help my lane, please. And if they don't help, it's fine, just sit back and relax, don't overextend for it. Six kills to four, huge wave stacking. I'd be scared of the Talia on the bot side rates, by the way. If you've got a huge wave like this, be a little bit cautious. More if they have a jungler like a Zac or a Gragas, and the Talia does pop up like I thought. Make a level six, looking to get zoned off. Yo, I wonder if he goes for this, by the way. If he E's in the Talia, we'll try and go for a flick. Just making sure to get the XP. Perfect. He has Ignite, no Flash. Lucian has Exhaust, so I don't really see how the solo kill is possible with that Exhaust. Unless you burst before the Lucian Exhaust. I don't think Rookie would mechanically outplay it. He's just going to wait for his jungler. Perfect. Nothing wrong with this, guys. Playing towards your team. And he'll finally go in. He gets exhausted, pops the Ignite. He'll E out. Holds his Flash. And that all in. Ooh, Talia looking to hover now. Gotta be careful. All eyes on the mid lane, my god. Tight game, only 100 gold lead for red side. And Rookie's ain't gonna end up with a double. He's gonna be double fake as CS, it seems, or close to it. The Seraphine wants to try and pull the wave for a freeze. Faker looks like he just wants to hard shove it. Pinging the wave. There's no, because there's, 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 he literally just needs the base. Ooh, and the enemy team knows this, and they're going to try and counter it. Leona flashes in. Faker finally dies. And I think this is a lesson to all of us. There was plenty of times where Faker could have got a base off and sacked a wave. But it was pretty greedy at the end of the day to stay. I think you definitely could have just simply sacked those CS, sacked that XP, come back with the Seekers, um, and try and set up a better lane state for yourself. But in the end, Faker gets cancelled his base like 12 times. He gets his Seekers, gets his Revolver, but... This Lucian, honestly, is still super strong. And they take the gold lead for the red side team. Double kill over to Rookie. I love watching Rookie. He plays a very good lane. Like, he, he plays very good zoning with things like Zoe, Syndra, um, Lucian. I played against his Syndra in Korea, and I got rolled in my early lane. The guy doesn't... I could not breathe. It was so annoying. Every single step I made was counted with a nice skill shot setup or auto. the hard shove now looking to roam one very good tip against katarina's is having elena that hard shoves sure the katarina like even if you pick something like a victor that can hard shove sure you have like katarina can burst you because you don't have much mobility but by able be, being able to hard shove the wave over and over keeps her in the lane and when katarina is in lane it's not that good katarina excels at roaming around the map and picking off comps that are overextended or in bad positions. So if the Katarina is sitting on the tower all early game, um, it's a pretty safe bet she's not going to get ahead. This Talia's tempo is so good. Talia jungle at the moment, guys. It's the strongest, strongest jungler in the game. Baker looking to pop over the wall. Oh. Nice, I like this. Q goes out, Lee Sin moving in. Faker goes in. Pops his ultimate, dances around, gets that shutdown over. And picks up some gold for himself. Really nice vision. Well, he didn't have vision. Very nice prediction of where the Lucian would be. Talia gets a flick. Faker got to move across again. He can E towards the Wraiths. And he flashes in. He gets that another shutdown onto the Talia. With 3-1 now. And this is exactly, like, this is perfect. This is really, I really like this countering gameplay. I think that the only, the big, the biggest mistake has been those back timings in the early game. But other than that, it's been a very patient Katarina game. You don't have to overforce on Katarina and Assassins. People get these picks like Katarina and Zed and they're like, okay, enemies here, I got to make a play. Just be patient. A lot of the kills will come, will present themselves to you and they'll come. You'll get great score lines. Not really KDA whoring, but it's like, the kills will come. You don't have to overextend and, and pressure too much for them. Unless you've already got that lead, then you can start to pressure. 
as Faker looks to grab a base. Probably going to get a Knight Harvester, right? Gets those Sork Boots. Um, it's probably going to be a similar build. We did a, we did a, we did a uh, Showmaker Katarina review a while back with that Burst Katarina that does so well in solo queue. I've still got to do a review on these Katarina mains that are going this crack in Blade of the Rune King setup. This AD Katarina, it's so gross. Just looking for a good Katarina main to review. There used to be a couple. There used to be that really good one in Korea that went the, the TP Ignite. But I've lost track of his OPGG. So many bloody name changes. As we have a level advantage here. Faker, honestly, dude, you could go for a solo. He just doesn't have any vision on bot side. Goes in, pops the ultimate. You can see the Leona. Ugh, I think he could have E'd in. But he ends up getting the hard commit. It works out. And he's looking to try and finish off this Leona. Talia, oh, beautiful dodges from Faker. I was looking for him to pop an E to dodge the Leona ult. But he ends up just sitting and getting... Demolished by it, but ends up living and getting his fourth kill of the game. Really nice um, setup by Seraphine. In high elo, when you play guys, the mid lane is not really a 1v1. It's about jungle and support roams. That's all it's about. As they're going to commit for the mid lane. This Harold should give them the gold lead back in their favor. AP Cog Bot? This guy's name is 80 Gap. <laughs> So good. Like a bit overextended here. Jack's moving in. Let's see how he parts. He needs to get an E back. Seraphine ult pops out. Faker somehow grabs that kill. Looks to move back in. Looking for it. Just waiting. So you want to try and... Do you see how he's just very patient? He plays the spacing. He waits for the Leona to try and get the stun. And then you want to move in. Don't just willy-nilly move into a Leona. Because she'll insta-stun you till you flick dead. Just be on the outskirts pressuring. And wait for their skill shot to then go in. As he's definitely got enough gold now for the Mythic. And will we see Katarina be played or Faker playing Katarina in the LCK? The answer is no. Most certainly not. Katarina in competitive play is terrible. Night Harvester picked up. Watch the burst with this Night Harvester combo. The reason you don't really see Katarina or any type of Assassins really in pro play is that Assassins make... Assassins are best used against teams that don't have good communication, um, players that are looking to overextend and make riskier plays, play around non-vision. Um, in pro play, it's completely different. Players play very patient, they play slow. Um, they're not often overextended. You don't often get very like, um, you don't get like completely uh, sloppy team fights where you can just come in from the side. Teams are very well organized and you'll get instantly CC'd up. But that's why these picks like Katarina, Fizz, you know, Zed still do very well in solo queue, but we won't see them in competitive play anymore. Which is a shame, because we used to see a lot of them. But as players got better and teams got better, it just really is apparent that these picks are usually not that great in the competitive scene. Kiana is another one of them that you probably won't see in the mid lane. I'm going to try and set up a pick on the red buff. This Cogmore is 0-8. Against Kaiser, who is arguably the best AD carry at the moment on the patch. Moving in. Lee Sin looking for a pick. Look for, the, look for the shutdown on the Kaiser. We need to get it. We don't get it. Rookie picks up the kill. And interestingly enough, Rookie has a tier. He might be going for the Mirror Mana. He definitely will be. It's going to be very late though. As we're 11 kills to 18, 7 kill deficit. I'm wondering how the hell you turn this game around. Okay, I like this play. Aatrox needs to try and bait it. They they understand, like, there's no... Why would Aatrox try and zone, like, ego up and staunch them off the wave here? Unless there was a faker sitting in a brush. Hiding on the brush, of course. Oh, Leona ult goes through. Faker waiting for it. This could still be it. Mm, not quite. We've got to eat these shutdowns. Faker looking to go in. 
Here we go. This is it. This is it. Wait for them cooldowns. We know Leona's probably sitting in that flank. And Faker, the only thing he's concerned about right now, he wants that shutdown onto the Kai'Sa. He goes in. Can anybody tank? No, they can't. Six kills to Faker's name now. And he'll hit that base. Probably Night Harvester into the Hourglass. Um, a lot of situational items. You can go third. Let's see what he pops into. Hourglass, of course, meaning you can hard engage. And then you Hourglass and your cooldowns are back up. You see this often for assassins like the Kiana, sorry, like the Katarina, um, like the Fizz, who like to go in and then with very short cooldowns that after the Hourglass, they can uh, use them non-ultimate abilities again. Beautiful shutdown. Aatrox grabs that. Aatrox has that Gore Drinker. Absolutely monstrous, this pick at the moment. And they'll move in. They're looking for a pick onto the Jax. Jax hard engages. Cute. Waits for the E. Baker goes in. Pops the ultimate. Seventh kill of the game. Yes, sir. And you can see, like, 110 CS at 17 minutes. It's pretty low CS for Faker's standards. But when you're playing these picks like the Katarina guys, like the Fizz, um, like the Kiana, you, you, CS is great, but you really need to be focusing on uh, making those picks and getting the kills and getting the steamroll going. It's not a Victor, it's not an Orianna slow paced. You gotta sack a lot of CS in the early game as well, obviously. Um, especially when you got these terrible ranges. Baker, no flash, no ignite. Rookie has a level advantage. Without exhaust though, if Lucian's in a bad spot, Faker will just hunt to zero him. Seraphine grabs a kill onto the Kaiser. Faker moving up now. Need to try and kill this Talia. Beautiful, there's a pink here. Faker, just gonna hover on this brush. Mm, too much farm to be had here. Gonna clear this wave in. So it's 7 to 25, but you gotta remember the Cogmore 0 11. A lot of those deaths aren't worth that much gold. So it's only a 1k kill advantage, a 1k gold advantage for red side here. Two dragons though, gotta be careful with that. I forgot to ask, how's everyone's season going? This is a brand new season. Just dropped. At the start of the season guys, I always recommend to play on, if you have a smurf or a different account, don't play on your main to begin the season, play on a smurf, because the games are extremely coin flip. The system hasn't been able to really do efficient matchmaking yet. They're very one-sided teams, and there's a lot of pressure on the rift. So if you can start with a smurf to try and test things out, you know, get in there, just keep warmed up, then about a month into the season, start breaking away onto that main and putting time in is usually the best way to do it. Um, because I see a lot of people, they spam games, like a lot of them at the early season on their main. And what they end up doing is getting a terrible win rate. They ruin their MMR for the season. Um, and then it's get stuck back to where they started the season before. Play it slow. Definitely recommend Smurfs to begin it. And it's going to be a Lich Bane third item for the Katarina. He wants to just completely stomp and one-shot the enemy carries. Trying the target focus should be the Talia, the huge bounty. Always be looking to set up these um these kills, guys. Like look at who the enemy bounties are, and that should be your target focus. Um, usually they're the members that are doing the most DPS as well. Okay, they're overextended on the top side. If you get a, if you get an ace here, it's gonna be it's gonna mean 100% Nash. Aatrox stalls for as long as he can. You can see Talia there waiting. Poor Faker, unable to get anything. Ooh, Leona.
the hell is this Cogmore doing? We'll never know. Well, he picks up her seventh. Faker moving in now. He has both summoners. I feel like with if you're seven and one, you've really got to try and make a game-changing play soon. The problem is you got to play around. It's got it's got to be on the Seraphine alt. Without Seraphine alt CC, it's going to be too hard to move in. Steal the camp, please. I would have done it. The dragon coming up. We'll determine what soul it is. Lee Sin picked off in the river now. And he drops to the Lucian, unfortunately. Faker looking to turn. Oh, bit extended here. Got to E out. Gets that exhaust out of Lucian, though. That's super valuable. They're hovering here. Aatrox actually looking for something. Gets the flash from the Kaiser. That's huge. The owner ult comes out. Not much CC left. Just watch how Faker plays it. Dodges out on that Talia flick perfectly. And honestly, it's a good time to get that re-engage. Lee Sin coming out of base now. Faker. You got any plays, buddy? Pops the ultimate. Looking to pop the Leona. Leona gets the stun of the Faker to cancel that. Cogmore first kill of the game. And really nice setup. You gotta remember the Kaiser, no flash. And that is gonna be. Oh. Seraphine, don't steal this. Faker grabs a 1000 bounty. Kaiser comes in. Seraphine ult comes. I actually would have seen. Love to have seen Faker try and turn that. And they're gonna try and two man Nash, which is I'm not sure if it's the best idea. Aatrox picks a kill. Faker goes in. Still has his hourglass. Pops it. Aatrox finishes the Lucian off, and that's gonna mean a free Nash. Beautiful fight. From blue side team as this jacks hammers away on the bot side nash are you serious we should have enough for a lich bane now i feel like he's been out of the base for ages pick up lich bane and then one shot the jacks let's see almost ultimates almost back online Jax doesn't look like he's on a hard commit for the inhibitor tower And it's a dead even game. Dead even gold. Nice picks by Faker, by the way. That was really well played. And even for this next team fight, he's gonna he's got no flash on the Talia Lucian and the Kaisa and no exhaust. You're chilling. All you've got to be thinking about is the Leona stuns. Wait for the Leona CC to go through, and then that's your moment. Do not go before that, otherwise you'll probably throw. Moving in, just on the mid lane wave, I guess. Just sending an ARAM. You see how Faker puts that dagger behind him, that W, by the way? That's just so that he can go in. If he's any trouble, he'll just E back to that and have the reset. Ooh, rookie. Terrible positioning. Faker looking to make his way in. And he grabs that kill. Ninth kill of the game, I love it. Why does the enemy team feel so useless? Faker going in gets all the CC out of Leona. They grab that Leona up. They're going to keep on pressing in here. Faker looking to try and get the Talia. How many resets is this Katarina have? This does not seem fair. Talia ult pins them. Oh, God. This. Just leave the Cogmore, please. Oh. Cog's not done yet. Faker literally in between the two towers here. And this Cogmore poke is not a joke. God damn. I'm gonna try and set this up for myself. They're looking to end the game? Question mark. And Seraphine picks up the jacks. They're just gonna run this through. Bloody hell. Baker going in, gets the exhaust, pops the hourglass. Leona, careful for the CC. I'm gonna try and grab the tower, then finish Leona off. And that's gonna be the game right there, big dog. Absolutely ridiculous. Perfect. Perfect game by Faker.
just joking. Gives the shutdown over to Talia before the Nexus explodes, of course. What better way to end it? What a nice matchup. Honestly, Faker all over this game. Rookie, he had a lead, terrible positioning, and Faker comes out with the dub. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Good luck in the new season, guys, and it catches all next time. Peace.